Good evening. Let me say how pleased I am to be back in rainy Brussels. <laughs> and to thank Mr. Davio and the Friends of Europe for giving me the honor to be able to speak tonight. I'm tempted to ask you to do the same five in one clap. <laughs> Just in case, when I'm through speaking, you don't feel the same way. <laughs> in the last millennium, Europe dominated the world stage, controlling most of the world's trade routes, economic resources, and culture. Europe expanded world democracies economic and political systems, fundamental technologies, and a modern way of life. Following the Second World War, a shift in world power removed Europe from the center of the global stage as the United States and Russia Rival superpowers overshadowed Europe. Further changes brought China flexing its economic and cultural muscles to demand prominence on global platforms. At the same time, developing nations, including those in Africa, emerged to claim a place in an expanding global power platform. And Europe rose again, consolidating into a political and economic force throughout the formation of a European Union, which like magnet, drew in the Eastern European nations following the fall of the Berlin War and the newly freed states after the collapse of the Soviet Union. We thought at the time we had it all figured out our shared values of democratic and economic freedoms were on the ascent. The arch of history had been bent towards a more perfect system of governance. If there is one thing I have learned throughout my <clears throat> 80 years, is that you cannot rest on your laurels. No nation, no society, no person, no leader can. The next century will test all of us as nationalism, populism, isolationism, xenophobia, and illiberalism challenge our core values. Our values, our democratic culture, our trust in multilateralism. Friends, what does this mean for the future of Europe? 
how will Europe be able to stay relevant in a rapidly changing world? I propose that part of the answer lies in Europe's relationship with and engagements in Africa. To explain why, we must first look that the relationship between Africa and Europe, the Europe of today, could not be what it is without Africa. 12.5 million Africans taken from emerging empires, lost their lives and freedoms to the European need for labor. They lost their land, natural resources, and labor, which fueled the industrial revolution in Europe and other Western nations. The liberation and independence of Africa in the 1960s altered the dynamic between the continent and Europe. African nations were able to determine their own forms of government and free to set the course of their own countries. But while much has changed, much remains the same. Supra chunch, supra res menchus. Europe still relies heavily on Africa for raw material. Even advancement in technology rely on African resources. I would venture that everyone in this room is in possession of a smartphone, the symbol of our modern age of connectivity. These devices rely on rechargeable batteries of which cobalt is an essential component. 50% of the world reserves of this rare earth material are found in Africa. I propose that the Europe of tomorrow will rise to its true potential with a reset and a strengthening of its relationship with Africa a continent which by 2015, one of the five persons will have come, will belong to that continent. A continent whose biodiversity will be critical to slowing global warming, meeting the challenges of climate change, to become a driver of growth. <coughs> Friends, as the world continues to change, the balance of power created with the end of World War II is in flux. New, te new technologies allow us to be more connected than at any other point in human history. Space exploration and artificial intelligence are becoming more possible, if not inevitable. Europe <coughs> will need to create new strategies to overcome challenges if it is to stay relevant in this new world. One such challenge 
is that Europe's population is rapidly aging. 30% of Europeans are over the age of 55. Europe experiences 10.2 deaths per 1,000 compared to 10.1 birth per 1,000. Europe's population is expected to decline by 7%. This is compared to the explosive growth perceived and projected in areas like Africa, which is projected to double its size to 2.4 billion by the year 2050. Europe must also find new ways to stay at the forefront of innovation and technological development. This means that it has to compete with other areas of the world. The United States has a proven track record of innovation and producing disruptive technologies. China controls much of the world's rare earth mineral resources and remains a large manufacturing hub. Europe will need to compete with African nations who are also looking to become innovators. In both instances, Africa offers possible solutions to Europe. As Europe's population ages, it will need the influx of young people to replace those retiring to increase the workforce and to bring new skills and ideas to the European market. The migration of Africans to Europe, done safely and legally, can benefit both countries. Europe will benefit from an influx of employable individuals, and African migrants will benefit from education and vocational training obtained in Europe. Africa likewise can benefit Europe when it comes to innovation. Both continents seek to become hubs of innovation. Partnerships between Europe and Africa will prove mutually beneficial. Europe has technical expertise that Africa needs. But Africa offers Europe access to critical mineral resources. Friends, at crucial moments in world history, cooperation and partnerships were the solutions to problems. Following World War II, the Marshall Plan sought to develop Europe. Aid and assistance were sent to Europe to rebuild devastated infrastructure, jumpstart economies, and help European nations get on, it, on their feet. The United States recognized that rebuilding a war-torn Europe was not only a humanitarian duty, but that developing the economies of Europe would have a reciprocal effect. A developed Europe would in turn benefit the economy of the United States and the rest of the world. While times have changed, the underlying principle that a rising tide lifts all boats has not changed. This is my hope for the future of Europe and Africa. Both regions of the world have much to offer each other. Neither will solve their respective problems and isolation. Rather, it is through cooperation, 
partnership that we will be able together to reinvigorate our economies, develop our nations, and reach boldly into the future of innovation. Let us consider the following. Europe and Africa need a dialogue on shared innovations, the key to future progress. Both continents aim to become hubs of innovation. Together, new ways can be found to stay at the forefront of innovation and technological development. Partnerships between Europe and Africa, combining Europe's technical expertise, Africa's natural resources, and Africa's increasing number of young, skilled innovators will create a globally competitive, competitive technological hub that can benefit both continents. We talked about this afternoon with the Friends of Europe. We had in those meetings a young African innovator who talked about the experiences he had as he brought his innovative ideas, working with European companies to be able to improve certain elements of technological interventions in Africa. Second, Africa and Europe need increased trade and development. This is a historical partnership. Much, much like the Marshall Plan, Africa has much to offer Europe as its economies become even more developed. The African Continental Trade Agreement provides the opportunity for a pooling of Europe and African resources focused on infrastructure development, which includes roads, railways, telecommunications, and power. The African Development Bank has estimated that this will require 130 to 150 million dollars annually. Let me suggest, this is not beyond the reach of a European-African partnership. Joined by the private sector through instruments that provide a, re, a de risking of private capital. The plan for an infrastructure Marshall Plan is scaling of resources obtained from both countries. Europe, which has already started through the European Commission to provide resources for the building of infrastructure. Africa, through improved systems, revenue systems, domestic revenue taxing system can provide the resources that enable us to see a transforming Africa based on improved infrastructure and an Africa whose economies will grow to the place where it becomes not only a stronger partner to Europe, but a place to expand the trade relationship and the trading that has taken place over the years of partnership. Third, Europe must recognize the benefits of migration and immigration. A Europe-Africa partnership must agree on the means for legal, safe, and orderly travel from Africa to destinations in Europe. A compact 
between Europe and the African Union should replace individual country arrangements and should be based upon the global compact adopted in Marrakesh in December 2018. This compact seeks to encourage cooperation for tracking missing migrants and saving lives, ensuring migrants can access basic services and making provisions for full inclusion of migrants and social cohesion while respecting the rights, the laws of destination countries. At the same time, Africa must adopt policies for the free movement of its people across borders and for the protection of those who do so for legal and justifiable reasons such as safety and opportunities. Africa must also continue to accelerate and diversify growth, adopt inclusive development strategies and good governance to give citizens the confidence and the desire to remain at home. Finally, equity for women. Yeah, I need a clap for that. The world applauds the strong leadership for equity, equal opportunity, and contribution of women in several European nations. There has been significant progress in others and throughout the world, including Africa, but the progress remains constrained by the failure to adopt the policies and measures required to achieve the gender equity of which we so often speak. Europe and Africa can combine policies and actions for a surge to support programs and interventions to create the wave of women made ready for leadership positions throughout the society. This would represent a boost to global GDP by up to 31%. We would also, with more women in, leader position, in leadership positions, have a more peaceful and secured world. As Europe and Africa face together the challenges of a changing world, there must be a true partnership. Africa has come of age, claims ownership of its endowment, responsibility for its own development, and leadership of a future defined by itself. In this, a strengthened partnership between Africa and Europe together can take the next steps by creating reciprocal accountability, adopting the laws and policies that ensures equity in commodity pricing, in tax systems, in capital, in capital flight, repatriation, and expanding and investing in the role of women. By working together, dear friends, Africa and Europe will inevitably be helping ourselves, be facing the challenges of competition from a changing world. 
the proverb you all know. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Africa and Europe have no choice. We've been together from those days before independence. We've stayed together all these years. And in the future, we have no choice but to remain together, to combine our forces, to ensure mutual benefits to all of our peoples. Thank you.